Good morning, church. Let's stand together as we begin our service. Here we go. Help us clap this morning. Here we go. One, two. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. And he opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, our God, he holds the victory. church we sing out we sing to the god who heals we sing to the god who saves we sing to the god who always makes a way because he hung up on that cross and he rose up from the grave my god still rolling stones away there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet, shout out your praise, cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free, we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise and we sing together because we were the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his everyone we are so glad you are here welcome to st matthew if you are joining us online we are so happy you are here as well we are just ready to have a wonderful sunday we've got some awesome songs planned the sermon i'm sure is going to be just wonderful so we are really excited to jump in with you guys um, if you got that connection card if you're new today we would love to have you fill that out you are welcome to go and connect at the welcome table as well um, and they would be happy to greet you get to know you a little bit and that is just a great opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better amen thank you becca you know um i always wonder why we do certain things in the church, right, in the liturgy, why we do an opening song, and why isn't the sermon first, and then we sing later, and why we do what we do. And I'm reminded of the confession and absolution that we normally do in Lutheran churches, and we do that on top, and why do we do it? And I'm reminded that in order for us to come to the throne of grace, we need to understand that we are people in need of a Savior, amen? We are broken. We fall short of the mark that is set before us. And so we open up our service in a time of reflection where we ask ourselves, where are we, where are we at with God? So let's do that this morning. We're going to begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Father, we come before you as a people, Lord, realizing that we have fallen short 
to your glory. Lord, we are in need of a Savior, so we come to your throne of grace and mercy and love, asking for forgiveness. We sing songs that ask prayer for that. We sing songs that reflect of your goodness. And so this morning, Lord, we ask that you forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness because we know that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And so we plead that this morning, we ask that we come to your throne of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say together, amen. And we continue this song. This song is a prayer this morning that reminds us that we are gracefully broken. Here we go, church. Make this your prayer today as we sing. Take all I have in these hands and multiply. God, all that I am and find my heart. On the altar again, set me on fire, set me on fire. Let's all sing. Oh, take all I have in these hands and multiply, God, all that I am and find my heart. On the altar again, set me on fire, set me on fire. Here I am, God, arms wide open, pouring out my life, gracefully broken. Take all I stand in your name, your mighty love. Strong till the end, you will fulfill your purpose for me. You won't forsake me. You will be with me. Here I am, God, arms wide open, pouring out my life, gracefully. Holding and holding nothing back and holding nothing back and I surrender and I surrender
Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we are broken gracefully. We know that through your power, we are made strong again. In our weakness, you are made strong. And so we cling to that, to that knowledge that we have, that we read in your word. And so we thank you for that this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and we say together, amen. So I learned a new word, church, this week. It's called the bop. So we did a new song a couple of weeks ago, and someone said to me, that song was a bop. And I was like, what does that mean? I thought it was like a bop, like bopping your head. But apparently it's slang term for it's a cool song. So, so this is a, what we call a bop. So kids, I learned that this week. So adults, a bop is when it's cool, it's a bop. Like that's a bop, right, Becca? Yeah. And then it slapped. Yeah. Okay, that's also. So the song slapped, it was a bop. Here you go, church. <laughs> New name written down in glory. Here we go. Come on, Becca.
church. Was that a bop? I think it was a bop. Amen. Well, good morning. Why don't we greet one another and let's have a seat. And the children are dismissed this morning. So as you are seating down, we're going to transition into our sermon. So children, you are dismissed going to children's church. Youth, fifth grade through high school, you are also dismissed. Everybody, my name is Brad. I'm one of the pastors here. It's great to be with you. Whether you're in person here or whether you're online with us, uh, we pray that you're blessed today. God's not bound by space and time. Uh, his spirit, by his word, touches our hearts and would, would deal with each of us, give us his gifts uh, so that we can, we can sing that song we just sang with even more uh, joy. Huh? I am who I am because you, the I am says I am. Oh, that's awesome. My name's written in glory. Awesome stuff. I often wonder that Marco, he picks those songs just before I get up to preach. And it's like, okay, what do I say now? You know, but uh, it was a great song. This is our series, uh, Heroes of the Faith, uh, Then and Now. Um, if you're uh, new today, uh, a guest today, we, uh, th you're jumping right into this series at the very end of it, and I just want to mention that. Uh, also, those at home, the idea was that we've, we've looked at the heroes of faith uh, in, in, uh, in the past, and, and we've said, hey, God empowers us to be just like them. Okay, so that, that, that's kind of been the, and, and this has been like an impact series, a series where we've looked at the vision that's God given us for two years and, and, and what he's calling us to commit to, that, that, that type of thing. Um, but this is the series, Heroes of Faith, uh, Then and Now. Some of you have heard me talk about uh, a good friend of mine in the second grade. Her name was Julie. And uh, Julie was really cool. She wasn't in school a whole lot, but we kind of hit it off. We were, we were real good friends. And uh, in fact, when she was there, uh, when she was outside for recess, I wouldn't even play kickball. I would sit there and I would talk with her, which is pretty amazing for a kid in the second grade if you're a boy, right? Um, and so we really connected. And this one day I was saying to her, yeah, it's really cool. Um, you know, what? all the other candy bars, it's, it's a long time ago, right? I, I said to her, all the other candy bars are a dime, but Three Musketeers are a nickel. And I said, and I, I like Three Musketeers, right? And the next day she brings me three dimes. And I say to her, wow, that's six, right? Three, that's six Three Musketeer bars. And I said, I'll bring you a couple tomorrow. I'll go home on my bike tonight and I'll buy it. She says, no, 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 it's all for you. It's all for you. Um, so the next day she was there and, uh, and I told her, I bought the bar. Are you sure you don't want it? No, 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 it's, it's all for you. The day after that, she was gone and she went in the hospital and she died. Uh, she taught me about grace. She's a hero of faith for me. I had a, a Sunday school teacher. I was in real young nursery school, and Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, she was there every Sunday. She was, well, I don't, it doesn't seem like it now, but she was really old. She was in her 70s, right? And uh, she was there Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And at the end of every Sunday, she would take, you, had, you guys know what a chalkboard is? They used to write on them, right? So she would take the chalkboard and she'd put a cross on it. And she said, remember, boys and girls, that Jesus loves you so much that he died for you. you got to know that he died for you and that he loves you. Every single Sunday, she's a hero of faith for me. My third grade teacher, I was fortunate enough to go to a, a Christian Lutheran school. And, and um, my third grade teacher, the first year of teaching, she was 22 years old. Uh, at that time, her name was Miss Prail. Uh, it was the most amazing experience for the whole year. She loved every single one of us. You know how in most classrooms there's a strata and the kids feel it and, and you live. She, her love blasted through it all. And, and we were like this one huge loved people and we loved each other. It was the most amazing year. You know, she's still teaching. I was talking to my daughter. This is about how God does this stuff. I, I, I was talking to my daughter yesterday. And she, yeah, her name's Mrs. Hart now. And she's 80 years old. She's still teaching. And she got a write-up in the, um, in, in the uh, Pasadena City Star. Uh, and, and it was all about her teaching methods. It was just amazing. She still, she is a hero of faith for me. Do you have those in your life? People I work with. Uh, 
Pastor Nathan uh, and his wife, Lindsay. You know, they, they left a, a wonderful place where their kids could go to this wonderful school and they had everything they, they left because God called them here and they listened to the call. Hero of faith. Matt, you know, the tall guy that works with high school kids? Yeah, yeah. You know how, how he got started? When he was in high school, he, he went down to Mexico and he, he helped the poorest to poor. And, and he heard the call from God that that's what he was supposed to do with his life. He's never turned his back on that call. That's a hero of faith for me. Jan, our, our, our new children's uh, minister and family minister, you know, she had it made. She's got it made. She, she was a teacher. She could do it. And, and she heard the call of God to do this. And Marco, you know Marco, right? Brilliant guy, huh? Getting his doctorate in music from USC. Had it all laid out in front of him. He, he, he was, uh, he, his home is down in Southern California. It's where he grew up. He left all of that because he heard the call of God. These are heroes of faith. And, and uh, Ron, our deacon, you know, he, he sees all of the hospital folk in hospitals and he's, those who are dying. And, and so he makes such a relationship that he's doing a lot of the memorial services and funerals. You know how much we pay him? Not one red cent. That's what we pay him. Hero of faith, baby. You have these people in your life? I uh, was fortunate enough, we have a woman here that works with ALS patients, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And I was uh, fortunate enough to be at a gathering that, uh, with all the people she works with. It was the most amazing thing for me to see how they are in awe of her because of how she loves these people and how she shares the love of Jesus with them. Hero of faith. I could go on and on. When I, um, when I first came here, uh, I, I interviewed with the church, and we were in a little storefront, and, and, uh, and they, they extended me the call uh, to come and be their pastor. And, and um, the, I got the call, and the next day I found out that the cancer had returned for my wife, and I told them she had been cancer-free, so I thought, oh, this doesn't work. I, it's like I'm being dishonest. And I, so I called the elders. Uh, Dale was uh, the head elder at the time. You don't get a chance to see Dale because he's uh, lots of times he's not feeling well. But I said, I said, you guys can rescind the call. It's okay. Because I know that your little congregation, you don't want to take on a pastor uh, whose wife is uh, going to be in chemotherapy and going to be sick. I, I understand that. And I got a call the next day and they said, no, you're, you're coming. Hero of faith. All those guys, the heroes of faith. When I, when I came uh, the first year, this small little congregation had paid off uh, the land on which they were going to build a church. It had been $400,000 over three years. And, and we had a capital campaign to build a building. It was $1.6 that we needed to raise to build a building, less than 100 family units. And the people that were helping us said, no way you're going to make that, baby. They did it. Heroes of faith. It's all around us. You know, when I, when I put this together, I, I wrote on my paper the word eloquent. <laughs> I wanted to be eloquent when I talked about these people. Unfortunately, I'm not an eloquent speaker. I'm kind of an earthy speaker, you know. But this is so very important to me. It really hit me that in this study of heroes of faith, we've, we've looked at these people in the past, and I think we've just seen them as stories. And, and we haven't seen the connection like we should, that they were real people. And that just as God raised them up, he wants to raise you and me up, us real people in the lives that we live to be heroes in the kingdom. That's the connection. This, uh, this series started with this verse from, from uh, uh, the book of uh, Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. What is that race? That race is to be on the mission with Jesus Christ to redeem and restore all things. Go into all the world and make disciples. And then, so we're disciples, we're followers of Jesus who make followers of Jesus wherever we're at, whatever we do. In the most humblest of places as parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and friends and neighbors, we make disciples who make disciples. As people who are part of St. Matthew, wherever you're at at home, you, make, you follow Jesus and you teach others to do the same. 
so that his life and his kingdom can, can seep into every area of our world. That's the mission. In, in the beginning of Acts, it says that everything Jesus did in, in the Gospels, the life, death, resurrection, it says that was only the beginning. His mission is ongoing, and we're a part of it. This is calling us to throw off everything as if all of these real people who have gone before us are cheering us on. In chapter 11, it, it talks about these real people. That's therefore, that's, what's the therefore? Therefore, it's because of what was said about them. And what's amazing is, go ahead, put that up. What, what, what's, what's amazing is that the guy says, I don't have time to talk about all of them. If I was going to sit up here and talk about all of them, I would talk about every single one of you. I could tell stories about every single one of you and how God is at work in your life. How he's calling you to be a hero. And none of us do it perfectly, but every single one of us is led by his spirit to be a hero in this world and in our life together and in our mission together. And you're doing it. I don't have enough time to talk about everybody he says, but, I, I, but, but these are the folks who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, shut the mouths of lions. So, so, so the Daniel, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, quench the fury of the flames, uh, three men in the fiery furnace, okay. Uh, and escape the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength. And we say, ooh, I can't do that. These people were no different from you and I. It was in their weakness that God's strength is made perfect. And then he goes on. He describes them. Others were tortured and refused to be released. Weakness. Some faced jeers and flogging while so others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned to death. They were sawed in two. That's Isaiah. They were put to death by the sword. The world was not worthy of them. They were weak any human eyes looking at them would say they had completely lost, that they were accomplishing nothing, and yet in the kingdom of God, they were doing great things. I do not want you to go away today thinking that somehow this isn't talking about you. That it's not talking about you being a hero of faith for Jesus Christ in your life. In the places he calls you to be, where he, what he calls you to do, and yes, as the people of God in this place. And it flows on. It, it gives us the greatest example for us. It gives us Jesus. It goes on in Hebrews, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And when we do that, um, most of the time we... We think about that song we sang, right? My name's written in glory. <laughs> Not because I've done anything. Not because I've climbed the mountain. Not because I've stuck my thumb in the plum and I'm a good boy. Huh? Only because of Jesus. That's what we think of, right? Jesus went the way the cross for us and our sins are washed clean in his blood and we, we have life with him. You see, we were created to be happy and whole only in connection with God. Only in relationship with him. I, I had this discussion with a guy a long, long time, uh, about two weeks ago, and he said, he said, I don't get this relationship thing. What's, what's that all about? I don't know what that means. And I, say, and I said to him, well, think of the word trust. When you got married, you made a promise and your wife made a promise and you trusted. That's the beginning of relationship. Do you trust Jesus? Do you trust his words? Do you trust that he loved you so much that he would go the way of the cross? That's how we think of him first and foremost, right? It says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Do you know what that joy was? That was you. And that was me. having life in him. Sin, it, it always separates us from God and, and from each other. And, and we look to so many other places to be happy and whole and complete. How's that working for you? It doesn't work for me either. And so Jesus came to fill us up the only way we can be filled up, what we were created for. 
connecting us to God in his love and through him with one another in love. That's how we think of Jesus, and that's absolutely true. But in this context, Jesus is also held up as our great example. Not only the, the heroes of old, not only the heroes that we see around us, but Jesus as our greatest hero. It says, therefore, uh, it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. It says, the author and perfecter of our faith. Uh, per perfecter here means the one who brings us to our God-intended conclusion. He's the one. He brings us to where we need to be, we ought to be, that he created us to be. Who for the joy set before me endure the cross, scorning its shame. It's kind of our lives, right? Jesus. It lies of weakness and struggle, and, and we love those around us no matter what the cost. So Jesus did and took him right to the cross. It looked like he'd lost, right? But then it says, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's a figure of speech for saying he fills everything in every way with the power and majesty of God because he's God. He's our example. We're called Christians because we're little Christ in this world. And yeah, it's going to look like we lost sometimes, that we haven't accomplished anything. But the Bible says we rule all things with Jesus somehow. And he rules all things for us. At the end of all things, yes, we will, we will die, but we will be raised again. And we'll be glorified. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. So interesting to me, in John 20, Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, this is after his resurrection, by the way, I am sending you. And then he says, receive the Holy Spirit. You see, for every single one of us, God gives us his spirit and his gifts to be heroes in the kingdom. I was... Uh, reading a little devotional thing called Pours of Prayer. We kind of give those away sometimes. And there was a little devotional that said, do you read the Bible for information or transformation? Information or transformation? Are you listening today to be informed? Or are you listening today to be transformed? Do you go God to God in prayer to be informed or to be transformed? Do you open up the book, the Bible, to be informed or to be transformed? What is it? This is so powerful because... Because Jesus came to change us, to give us life in him, and to change us every single day in him. Go ahead, put, put that next one up for me. It says in Corinthians, and we are being, read the word, transformed into his likeness with ever-increasing glory. This, this is his purpose for us. To change us every day more and more into the hero that he was. That's why it says that, it says we are, we're, we're baptized with him, right? We're baptized into his death, and yet we rise up to new life, brand new every day. He is transforming us. I got to bring my Bible up. I'm sorry, guys, I forgot it. It's, uh, oh, good, I'm here. All right, in, the, in this uh, uh, text here, in, uh, I know I didn't go down. In this text here, in, in Luke, it's, yeah. <laughs> It says, it starts out here, and, and Jesus says, uh, hey, don't, don't worry about stuff. Don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to put on. He says, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. Look at the birds. Look at the flowers. I take care of them. Don't think I'm going to take care of you. How much more valuable are you than they? I died for you, man. I didn't die for the birds. I died for you. I'll take care of you. Don't worry. Don't have anxiety over these things. And then he says this. He says, uh, 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 he says, for the, for the pagan world runs after all these things. They make them their gods, the thing that's going to rescue them, right? And your father knows that you need them, but you seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do you hear that to be informed or transformed? Are you shaking your head because you say, oh, that's right, or are you saying, how is that supposed to transform me? How is God's spirit touching your heart with that? It goes on here, it says, uh, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Is that to inform you or transform you? You have the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. Is that meant just to inform you about that fact? 
Was I meant to transform you into the reality that you live in the kingdom and you have it already? And it goes on here. It says here, uh, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted where no thief comes near and no moth de destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Is that just to inform you? If I said, do you believe that? And you say, oh yeah, I, I believe that. That's good. Okay, how is that transforming you? What difference is it going to make in your life? You see, God's will for you is to be transformed. You know, he, he, he brings us to his perfection. Remember that? The author and perfecter of our faith. And that word means to us God intended conclusion. This is God's intended conclusion, to a conclusion that we are Christians in this world, little Christ, that we're being transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. And this is to his glory and our great good. This is what life should be about. Is scripture there just to inform us? by the power of God in Jesus Christ to transform us. And what does that mean for us? That song we sang, it talked about being free. It frees us to be who we were created to be. Heroes of faith is it's supposed to be flesh and blood examples so that in our flesh and blood more and more we can live in the likeness of Jesus Christ. That's what we were created for. And through this, the kingdom comes in our world. All right, Esther. <laughs> this is the, uh, the hero of faith today. Many of you may not have heard about Esther. It's kind of funny. It's a little book. So you have these big books of history in the Old Testament. You got 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Big, big books of history, right? Then you have Ezra and Nehemiah. It's the history after the children of Israel were carried off into captivity by Babylon. Then you have Esther little book. And then you have Job, big book, right? So you got this little book about Esther. And it takes place in that time. The children of Israel, uh, they had rebelled against God, and so he came, the Babylonian Empire came down and, and destroyed Jerusalem, impaled their soldiers on spears, carried them off into captivity. There was like three captivities because they kept rebelling. Uh, and, um, and, and then a, a new king came and let, and he said, you can go back there. I, I want you to go back there, rebuild the temple, say prayers for me of this great God, right? But only a few trickled back to Jerusalem because they had become prosperous. And so the Jews were over this huge empire that stretched all the way to India. And, and, and they were prosperous and they had lots of stuff. And, and so it's set in that time and, and it was a broken time, a uh, time of, of gross stuff, uh, the king was an absolute monarch. Absolute. Uh, he gave a party that lasted six months for the leaders of the empire. Six months, baby. A lot of wine flowed in those six months, let me tell you. That's a huge party. I don't know if I can handle that even at 18. Right? Six months the party went. And in the middle of this party somewhere, he has his queen come, Vashti, and he says, hey, uh, he wanted to show her off because she was beautiful. Broken world, right? This is all messed up. I got to tell you guys, this thing is all messed up. It's all not the way it should be. So he calls Vashti, and Vashti says, no, no, I ain't going, man. And the king says, that's fine. I'm going to depose you. And so he kicks her out of being the queen. Yeah. But now he's got to have a queen, right? He's got a big harem, but he's got to find a queen. And, and so what they do, remember I told you it's a broken world, it's messed up, right? So they go to all, all over the kingdom and they find all the pretty girls. They found Esther. She was a Jewish girl. Her parents had died. She'd been raised by her uncle. And they found her. And, and so they bring them all into the harem and they work on them for a year. They, remember I told you this was messed up? I, almost, I hate to even say this stuff. But anyway, they, they, they work on each girl for a year to make her prettier. I don't know what they did, but they worked on them, right? And then each girl uh, would spend a night with a king. And then the one he liked the best would be the queen. Messed up world, right? Broken world. How would you like to be caught up in that? This was Esther. She was chosen as the queen. And she sure didn't have a care in the world, did she? I mean, she was the queen of this vast empire. The king had chosen her. Unfortunately, her uncle, who was probably pretty high in the civil service, he heard of a plot to, to kill all of the Jews in, in the world, all the Jews in the kingdom. And so he gets a message to Esther. He says, hey, you've got to do something about this, man. You've got to go talk to the king. Now, that sounds pretty good for us, right? I mean, she, had, she must have the king's ear, right? Uh, she, she can go talk to him. But this is what she answers uh, her uncle Mordecai. Go ahead. 
All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law. Read it, read it for me. That he be put to death, that he or she be put to death. That's the only law. You don't approach the king without being called. If you do, you're dead meat, right? That's the law. Oh, but there, there is a loophole. The only exception to this is for the king to extend the gold scepter to him and spare his life. That didn't mean the king was going to do it, guys. Only if he wanted to. Because the only law is that you're dead meat. But you think, well, wait a minute, she's the queen, he chose her, it's got to be cool, right? But then she adds this, she says this, but 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. Uh-oh, we got problems. I'm not sure I'm his favorite anymore. He doesn't seem to want to see my face. Maybe I displease it. Anyway, if I walk in there, there's a huge chance I'm losing my life. Uncle, I got to tell you these things, right? What would you have done? We talk about you create the image of Christ, he would go the way of the cross for the good of the world. What would you do for the good of the world? Esther was called to go to the king and put her life on the line. And she says, wait a minute, uncle, you don't understand. Look at this, man. Her uncle, he sends her this reply. Number one, he says, don't think you're going to escape this. You, you're a Jewish girl. You get found out, you're going to die. But I think there's more to this than that. For us, it's this. Don't think you're going to escape the broken world. Don't think that if you put a little circle around yourself and take care of yourself and your family and your kids and your grandchildren, everything is all right. Don't think that if you have a bunch of money in the bank, you'll be fine. Everybody else will go to hell, but you'll be okay. Don't think that if you control everything around you and make everything your God's, and if you think you, you put your trust in everything else that will keep you safe, that the brokenness of the world won't touch you. Because it will. It touches all of us. When I think about this, I think about all these commercials that, that talk about financial planning when you get retired, you know. And the crazy thing is, none of them talk about the fact you can't take it with you. None of them talk. It's, it's like they say, Ben, if you're there and, and you have enough, everything will be fine. Well, not everything's going to be fine. You're going to kick the bucket, pal. All right? I mean, that's what's going to happen here. None of us gets out of here alive. Esther, you're not getting out of here alive. Neither are you. Neither am I. And then he says this. God is going to have the victory with or without you. You want to be a part of it? Now that last part I put in there. You want to be a part of it? Because I think that's understood. He's going to have the victory with or without you. Now, what does this mean? I, I, you, know, you know, lots of times we talk about the fact that it says in Corinthians, nothing done in the Lord is ever done in vain. And we talk about prayer in James. It says the prayer of a righteous person. And each of us is declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. The prayer of a righteous person, it accomplishes much. And it even gives the example of, uh, of what Elijah or Elisha, when, when, when he prayed and there was no rain, and he prayed some more, there was rain. Our prayers accomplish great things. And now it's saying here, hey, no matter what you do, God's going to do his thing. His kingdom's going to come. How do we put that all together? God does. He just wants us to know both things. What we do matters. But his kingdom will come and will stand. Someone, a uh, Christian once wrote about the Lord's Prayer, that kingdom comes says, God's kingdom will come without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it will come to us. You want part of this? See? That's what he's saying. I remember when I was a freshman in college, I, I went to a, a junior college in, uh, in Costa Mesa, Orange Coast Community College, and I was, I was going to play ball there, and, and I was going to the season and everything, and something changed at home uh, financially, so uh, in my parents' home, and, and I thought, okay, I got, I got to go to work. I, and I was kind of a, a prideful kid, uh, and so I, no, no way I'm looking for help anywhere. I just said, I, got, I can't play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I got to go to work. 
And that team, a team that I would have been a starting linebacker on, by the way, which I know you say, how the heck, he's two, he's two foot three, how can that happen? But anyway, uh, uh, anyway <laughs> that, 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 was the, that was the case. And so I missed out on that whole season and that whole experience of being part of a national championship junior college team. Esther, you want a part of this? God's going to win. His kingdom's going to come. You want to be a part of it? I think God says that to each of us. My kingdom's going to come. I'm going to win. I've already won in Jesus. You want to be a part of it? That's what he's saying. And finally, uh, he says this, who knows but that you have come to royal position for just such a time as this. She was a queen. God had put her in that place at that moment for great things. Did you know you're a queen and a king? As you know, we're sons and daughters of the Most High. We're royalty. And God has put us in this place, in this moment, in this time for a purpose. As he empowers us by his spirit to take another step to be transformed in the image of Christ. Whether that's as his people together or whether that's in your individual lives at, at home or, or amongst the, the folks who are here. You know, if, if you're, if you're um, not tied to this body of Christ, uh, this, this arm of the body of Christ, uh, please wrestle with these things anyway. How is God looking to transform you into the image of Christ? Where has he given you the opportunity to be part of his ever-growing kingdom? What does that look like? What is he calling you? Where is he calling you to put your life on the line? You know, Esther got it. <laughs> this is what she finally answered. She, first of all, she asked the folks, uh, the, all the Jews to pray for her and fast for her, right? And then she says, after you do this, I will go to the king, and if I perish, I perish. How could she say that? If I suffer, I suffer. If I hurt, I hurt. If I perish, I perish. Because the kingdom was hers, the kingdom of God. Because she knew who she was. Because she knew that God had put her in that place for this moment as his daughter, not just the, the queen of some puny earthly kingdom but as the, as, as the queen, if you will, of the kingdom of God. If I perish, I perish because I win, because God wins. What an example of faith. What a hero of faith. Can you relate to her? This young woman who was swept up in the brokenness of the world, seemingly with no power, put in a place in God's providence where she could do great things in his kingdom. And it's no different for you. There's a poem uh, by Robert Frost who wrote Diverge of Yellow Wood, and it talks about this, this decision he's got to make. Which road is he going to take, right? And at the end of that poem, he says, and I took the road less traveled, and it's made all the difference. Most of the time, we, um, we pay lip service to the idea that the word of God isn't just to inform us, but transform us. The road less traveled is to open our hearts and minds into how God would transform us. And the next step we will take in that transformation. What does that look like for you? I pray that the road, rest, the road less traveled, his spirit will guide each of us on and we'll say yes to that spirit. Would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, we, we thank you. We thank you for all of these heroes of faith, and we thank you, Lord, for yourself, the greatest hero. Lord, we pray that, um, that just as you were absolute royalty, and God put you on this earth at just the right time, in the fullness of time, and you humbled yourself unto the Father.
have went their way to the cross, we pray, Lord, that you might show us that you have put us here as royalty and that your spirit would guide us on the road less traveled as we live our lives in you in the everyday transforming power of your spirit. Amen. We also remember those who are not able to be here today, those who are sick and hurting. Remember Maggie and Daryl and Lorna and Jeff and Royce uh, and those who are in our hearts. So Lord, we pray that uh, for each one of these that your, your hand of healing would be over them and you might heal them completely. We also pray, Lord, that you might give them comfort and peace and that you might show them how how you're holding before them a way in which they can do great things in the kingdom as they witness to your power and peace in their lives, even in the midst of their struggles. And Lord, we would be amiss uh, unless we prayed for our nation and our world. We would be um, just like those who want to circle the wagons and just say, I'm okay, (laughs) to heck with everybody else. And so we pray for our nation. We pray for our world. We pray that you would raise up leaders who will be servant leaders, who will look to serve those people whom they govern. And we pray that you would give them wisdom, and we pray that these leaders might lead us in civil righteousness for the good of many. And we pray that in, in our nation and in every nation of the world, you might multiply your people and, and extend your kingdom for the good of all. We pray in your name. Amen. You know, it's really hit me twice, uh, as you said it again in this service. The world was not worthy of them. And just made me think as we go into this process, how, how much we invest in this world to try and accomplish stuff in this world, and yet we're given the opportunity to be part of, of God's kingdom. So I want to take just a moment and, and walk you through the, the commitment card and, and talk about what that, that process is about. Because as God's people, we respond to his grace in our lives by giving back to him of what he's given us that we might be part of of supporting the mission. Can we have uh, some some slides that come before that there, Kevin? Okay, well, we'll walk through it this way anyways. The the most important slide, or the most important um, thing is this first page here. Uh, Because really what it's about is us growing in faith, us uh, choosing to take a step. And so on this card, I just encourage you to think about where are you at in in your generosity journey? And and if you don't have a card in front of you, uh, the card is also online. You should have got one as you walked in. And just ask that question, where am I in this process and where is God leading me uh, to take a step and and to, to make a commitment to him? Because as we give, it's also important that we think about what we give so that it's not just uh, something we do by chance, but something that we intend to do and intentionally do that, that God may work on our hearts as we're part of his mission here in this place. So how you fill out this card is if you flip over to the last page, uh, there you'll see a line that says, uh, what I we normally give. And, and this is a, a challenging conversation, but I think it is a, a good conversation uh, to have between husband and wife to think about what is God inviting us to do together and to think and talk and, and pray about it. And it's my hope that, that you have done that already. But if you haven't yet, I encourage you to do that. And there's just a, a number up there uh, as an example, but for some people that number is zero or uh, 20 or 50 or, or whatever it is. Now, that's not the point. The question is, where am I at and what step is God inviting me to take? And the next line, uh, you say, all right, now I'm going to take a step. I'm going to do something different than I've done in the past, and I'm going to add this. And then you add those two numbers together, and you get that third line there. And because this is a two-year commitment, uh, then you multiply that by two, and that is your two-year giving total. And then maybe down below that, there's other uh, gifts from my R stored resources. Um, maybe God has blessed you in some way that you weren't planning on. I know for me, I... Um, I got a workman's comp check that I wasn't planning on because I fell on a cushion. Yes, that's when I realized I was getting old and dislocated my shoulder and had to have surgery. And so I got a check and Lindsay and I weren't planning on it. And it was right when we were moving over here and I said, you know what, we should give some of that to this. And maybe God is touching your heart. Maybe God has blessed you in that way. 
And, and so then right there on that, that on that line, and then in that, that line there above, it says, my R, two-year commitment. And you put the number there. Then fill out your information, and then maybe God has blessed you this year. I know a lot of times here at St. Matthew, people experience God's blessing at the end of the year and, and write a check at the end of the year as they look back on the year and think, wow, God has really blessed me this year. Or maybe it's because, hey, I don't want to give it to the IRS. I'd rather give it to Jesus and his church. That's okay, too. We're all right with that. And put that together and then bring it up here and put it in the box. And if you're one of our leaders that were part of our early commitment service uh, that had already done this, I encourage you to participate again today. And if you've changed the amount because God's been at work on your heart, uh, just put a star on that card and we'll know which card is the one that we should look at. And uh, then if there's any questions, we'll follow up with you. And I also want to remind you that um, this is intention to give. I know as I was sitting down and talking to somebody, they said, you know, we've got a, a medical thing that's coming up and we're not sure how much it's going to cost us. We recognize that life happens and that sometimes our lives take a turn that we're not intending on. But how often in our lives do we, we live fearfully saying, well, this might happen or that might happen? I was listening to the radio the other day and I, I was flipping through channels and one was talking about the impending financial crash of everything. And so I changed the channel to another one because I was like, I don't want to listen to that. And then it was another one talking about how the world's going to melt because of global warming. And so I changed the channel again and it said, nobody's getting enough of this vitamin, so you got to take this. And I'm thinking... Everybody's pushing the fear button. We have a God who loves us and cares for us. And the world's not careening off its access as long as he's holding it. And, and I just think that that's powerful. The world is not worthy of us. We are God's chosen people in Jesus Christ. I invite you to come forward and put your cards in the box as we uh, participate in, in doing what God is doing here in this place as we sing this song. And after we do that, uh, I'll come up and I'll say a prayer and uh, we'll have communion uh, together as we receive Jesus, the one who gave everything for us. Let's all stand together, church.
and we're going to sing this song out. And every time we're going to proclaim our voices a little louder to the Lord, as we sing, all the earth will shout your praise. And we sing together. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing great. Are you Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing great. One more time, church. Come on. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So exalted as head over all wealth and honor come from you you are the ruler of all things in your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all now our God we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name but who are we that we should be chosen to be your children and carry forward your mission that our world might know your name and call upon you in praise Everything comes from you, and we give only what comes from your hand. So we as your people come to you calling on you as you taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus came to draw close to us, to give himself to us that we might know him and know that we are forgiven and loved in him. So on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave to him all, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The table of the Lord is ready where our Lord and our King, Jesus himself, gives his body and blood to us that we may know that we are loved and forgiven and part of his family. I invite you to have a seat. Uh, you'll be ushered forward to come and receive the bread and the wine. After you receive both, you may return to your seat, and then we'll do a general dismissal. Revealed in you are Christ. 
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The
world that is afraid. May you know the peace of Jesus, the peace that Jesus came to give you in this meal where he gave you his body and his blood so that you can know that you are forgiven and loved in him. Amen. A couple of announcements for you, uh, wrapping up. Um, first of all, um, the Christmas Carol is coming up. That's uh, this coming week, uh, Friday, Saturday, 7 p.m. performances. Great way to kick off uh, the Christmas season, uh, prepare to celebrate uh, Jesus' birth. And, and think about the power of Jesus' gospel of coming into the world and acting and living in that way rather than in the way of the world as uh, Scrooge is on display. Um, after that, Advent Wednesdays are coming up. The much anticipated, much debated, much talked about uh, Advent suppers are back. And so soup suppers on the 7th. Nope, getting it wrong. Yeah, no, the 7th is right. But there's the 30th before that. The Broder's Life Group has uh, volunteered to bring the soups uh, for that first Advent Wednesday. So we're looking for other life groups uh, to provide soups after that. And then um, I talked with some people in the choir and other leadership, and they told me I had a really terrible idea. And that was to do soup on the 14th before our concert. So there will be no soup before the concert on the 14th. Uh, so eat at home, come to the concert. We're going to have life groups uh, do some goodies around the concert uh, so that our guests that come uh, to hear the awesome uh, Christmas concert uh, can have coffee and drinks and, and goodies. And so that is going to be on December 14th. This is an awesome thing to invite friends and neighbors to. It is going to be incredible. It'll be a full Christmas experience with uh, some carol singing, some uh, singing from our choir, uh, some instrumentation, as well as some narration of the Christmas story as we look forward to uh, Jesus coming. And so do mark your calendar for that. Uh, you should have received one of those uh, little flyers on the way in. If you'd take like some. more. Take some. Take yeah, some. take some. Take some. Yes, that's what I was going to say next. Oh, that's good. That's all good. But I thank you. Thank you for reminding me. That's awesome. Take some. Invite some people. Uh, it's going to be great. And then um, the kids' Christmas show is coming up. And so if your kids are part of that, uh, we had a practice this last Saturday. We have one coming up in a couple of weeks. And then the final one will be on December 17th where the kids do uh, – all their final preparations, and it's going to be a long uh, practice of five hours. And so this is actually really good news for your parents. We're keeping your kids for five hours on a Saturday so you can go do all your Christmas stuff. And so we're going to feed them. It's going to be uh, awesome. And then the Christmas kids' Christmas performance is on December 18th, and uh, that'll be in both services. And so something else to look forward to. And so just so you don't forget, on the back of your bulletin, it says Soup Suffer Before the Choir Concert. Take a pen, cross that out, because that's not happening. So with that, I leave you uh, with the blessing God. I invite you to stand uh, for uh, the blessing and our final song. May you know the love of God the Father that was revealed in his son Jesus who came for you. And may you know the power of his spirit to walk in his grace and his power each and every day of your life. Go in his peace. Amen. church. God bless you. See you next week. It will be Christmas in here. See you next week for Sunday.